Let us turn first then to Christ has died, finding God in the story. Now, you're probably aware that the church gives us many symbols to help us to remember. And I was trying to think, what symbol of remembering would I be fairly confident that you'd all have? And I thought, of course, shoes. Look at your shoes for a moment. What stories would your shoes tell of being scuffed or rebuffed or nasty puddles on polished days or polished days on polished dance floors? And what advice would they give? What advice would they give to the next pair? Now, the problem for many of us is that we think God works in the really big things, the big events of our lives, the extraordinary. But no. One of the things that the Lord has taught me over the years is that God shouts at me through the ordinary events of my life. There's a bit of a warning here about looking back. I want to tell you that there's a difference between nostalgia and tradition. Nostalgia at the moment is big business. That is, wanting to go back. Do you remember how easy life was once? But that's nostalgia. Tradition is remembering what lessons you learnt and moving on. Let me give you an example. When I come home late, I go and I find my children asleep. And some of you are going to know this feeling, but I look upon the children asleep in their beds and something inside of me is terrified. You know, I love them so much, they scare me. And one day I caught myself bending over Emily, she was just four years old, and in her sleep, marking a small cross on her forehead. That small cross that was first made at a baptism. And I remember one lunchtime saying to me, Mum, you know, it's really funny, Mum. You know, sometimes when the kids are asleep, I go round and just check them, and I catch myself putting a little cross on their forehead. And she said to me, we used to do that to you. And I said, I don't remember. And she said, you were asleep. But you see, it's tradition moving on. There's just something about Lent and Easter in everything. Will the cross sustain my children through it all? A short story then to finish about the Paschal mystery, looking back to look forward, inspired by a beautiful book by Robert Munch. We'd like you to sing the song with us, and we're going to practice with Kadina and Larry. So please, sing this at home. Please join us. And the mother held her new baby in very slowly, rocked him backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And while she held him, she would always sing this song.
until he was two years old and he ran around the house and he pulled all the books off the shelves and he pulled all the food out of the refrigerator and he took his mother's watch and flushed it down the toilet and sometimes his mother would say this kid is driving me crazy but at night time when that two-year-old was quiet she'd open the door to his room and crawl across the floor and look over the side and if he was asleep no really asleep she would rock him backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and backwards and forwards. And while she rocked him, she would sing. I will love you forever. I will like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. And the little boy grew and he grew and he grew until he was nine years old and he never wanted to come in for dinner and he never wanted to take a bath just like his dad and when grandma visited he always said bad words bad words and sometimes his mother wanted to sell him to the zoo but at night time when he was asleep that mother quietly opened the door to his room and crawled across the floor and if he was asleep no really asleep she would rock him backwards and forwards backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and while she rocked him, she would sing. until he was a teenager and he had strange friends and strange clothes and listened to strange music and sometimes the mother felt like she was in the zoo. But at night time when that teen was, teenager was asleep, the mother opened the door to his room and crawled across the floor and if he was really asleep she would rock him backwards and forwards. That teenager grew and he grew until he was a grown-up man and he left the home and got a house across town. Well, that mother, she got older and she got older and older and one day she called up her son and said, you know, you'd better come home because I'm getting old and I'm getting tired. And so her son came to see her and when he came in the door she tried to sing the song she'd sung a thousand times but she couldn't finish because she was too tired. And the son went to his mother and he picked her up and for the first time he rocked her backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and he sang this song. When the son came home that night, he stood for a long time at the top of the stairs and drank that night's first cold blood. And he went into the room where his very newborn baby daughter was sleeping. And he picked her up. And remembering the words she had taught him for the first time, he rocked her backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards and began to sing. Mm -hmm. 